Welcome back. This is Keziah Glow, and we are still in the Harlem 411 zone. We are still riding out. We go from 6 to 8 p.m. every Friday here on WHCR 90.3 FM. And this week, we have been talking about um, issues that affect our community. We've been talking about stop and frisk. We've been talking about ways to uh, change what's happening, the violence, uh, the misogyny, and then a lot of the music that young, the young people are listening to, the things that are happening in the household. Um, I'd like to keep this segment, my segment, going with uh, something that is a little bit uplifting and something that we can all relate to. Tomorrow will be the 21st annual tribute to the ancestors of the Middle Passage. And uh, what that deals with are the ancestors who came across across the Atlantic Ocean. Today I have a guest who is from Megar Evers and um, Dr. Moses Newsom is someone who has been working uh, with this ceremony for a few years back. This ceremony is not just for the people of New York City, although it will be held in Coney Island, but it's for all of us. And in this, we get a chance to listen to drums, to singing, to singing, to songs, and to remember our ancestors, remember what happened to us, and kind of heal ourselves. Okay, uh, I think you have uh, hit the nail on the head uh, for the most part. Uh, what we're trying to do is to recognize, first of all, have people... Remember that things didn't just start yesterday. If you go back in our history or her story or in the work that has taken place in terms of how we actually got here, we did not come here by choice, as you know. The Atlantic Ocean was a time, was a uh, a period uh, at that time when uh, we were forced over here. We were brought over here uh, in shackles. in like sardines uh, in a ship. And many of our ancestors, as it were, many of our uh, poor brothers and sisters did not make it. What we want to do is to make sure that our youth, as well as our adults, remember that there were those who preceded them. There were those who uh, came over, those who did not make it. Uh, And uh, there's reason to believe that uh, there is a a spirit, a renewing and uplifting that we can get from the fact that they attempted to to speak out, to stand up, uh, to not take it anymore. They're the ones that either jumped over the off overboard, or thrown over, or or refused to cooperate, as it were. Mm. And just like we have um, uh, our civil rights leaders, uh, Rosa Parks, who refused to get up, and, and Megar Evers, who refused to sit in the back. Uh, There were those uh, many years ago, hundreds of years ago, that uh, did the same thing. And we don't don't talk about it. We don't think about it. And so what we're trying to do is to have a uh, a coming out, as it were, a a series of reflections, uh, of poetry, of of dance, of of meditation, even to ensure that uh, we get the the karma, the spirit from those who, who preceded us. Mm. And uh, we, we treat it as a, a, a ceremony, but it's, it's a time for a libation, but it's also a, a, a time similar to uh, what we do uh, uh, during, uh, during burials. You know, we, we go to uh, cemeteries and we put flowers. So one of the last things we always do is we put flowers on, on the ocean. Okay, mm-hmm. to just like you would sprinkle some petals on the, on a grave site uh, to show that this, although it's moving, it is uh, it has a, a a an attitude about it, a reflection that can be remembered, can be uh, can inspire us uh, to uh, recall that uh, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what can be done as a result of the work that they've done. Just because of my background doesn't mean you could stereotype me for what I look like. My parents came here. My parents came here so that I could have a better life. Not all of us are the same. Not all of us are the same. Yo soy Latino. Ako ay Filipino. Oh, ay Please don't judge us. Please don't judge us. 
Please don't judge us. Please don't judge us. <laughs> Is this something that we need to have in our community more often? Because I didn't know about this for many years, and this is the 21st anniversary. And so what this is, as you said, is a connection to your past. And a lot of times we see the youth or we see people acting a certain way because they have no knowledge of what happened in the past. So do we need to begin to have these type of events? or these type of ceremonies more often where we're actually remembering what happened to us. Many other cultures, they remember and it's it's celebrated right. and to a certain degree. Yes, we do need to have these ceremonies, but what we're pushing for also is um, a tangible uh, reminder. Just like we have uh, the statue of, of Martin Luther King uh, in, in D.C. We have streets named after Malcolm X. We have uh, College is named after a college named after Megar Evers, and on and on. But we have nothing that reminds people that alludes to the fact that there was a, a, a group of uh, individuals, millions, quite frankly, that uh, uh, carved the way that made uh, made it so that we could have a better life here. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is to uh, draw some parallels, draw some parallels to uh, the suffering that took place on the, on the Middle Passions and said that, no, we don't have a, a ship per se, but we do have uh, many atrocities in the, in the current situation today. Uh, just uh, the previous topic of uh, the stop and frisk. Uh, many times uh, there's a limited knowledge about just the merits of that. You know, it may sound right on the surface, but when you start risking of bringing numbers that are larger than the actual population of those that are even eligible to be considered youth uh, and find out that uh, less than 20 percent of them uh, have any reason to be stopped at all mm -hmm. then there's a major problem right. uh, when you find that uh, this new form of Jim Crowism whereby uh, the prison industrial complex is supported at a rate higher than uh, the colleges and the universities where we're sending our people there and people are making money on uh, putting our people in these institutions. And I'm not talking about colleges. Uh, we're trying to get students to come, but there are private prisons now that increase their revenue. They, they, uh, they generate revenue based on the number of people that they can imprison, the right. long they can keep them. So we are, we're targets, and we know that once you go through the penal system, uh, and we do go disproportionately, uh, you get out and you're already marked, and you, your uh, ability to, to purchase things, your ability to vote, your ability to get a job, all that, I mean, you're marked. As a part of the administration of Megar Evers, what made Megar Evers take a part in this ceremony? Because the school itself caters to minority, and it's not just, it's not just black people, it's diverse group of people that it actually caters to and um, you know when we do the research and we remember who Megar Evers was who was someone who was fighting for our rights as you said and, and refused to give up what made the school take part in this ceremony we never want uh, the legacy to be forgotten about Megar Evers uh, Megar Evers died because he was out trying to do something that's going to take place very soon trying to get people to, to vote mm -hmm. uh, trying to encourage people to be a part of the democratic system. Well, uh, we know that uh, there are uh, individuals, uh, their faculty, their students who see that uh, there is a need to ensure that we always have a voice, that we are represented uh, in uh, proper places, that we have access to the jobs, appropriate jobs, access to uh, 
the, uh, the appropriate housing, uh, living conditions. Maker Evans, because we are community-based, we, we started out of the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that uh, had it not been for uh, some persons who saw the need to create a college that was community-based, yet also had a, uh, a vision to ensure that students were coming out with some marketable degrees, we said we've obviously got to do our part in terms of uh, ensuring that what Megar ever stood for and what he continues to stand for is not forgotten. Mm. Uh, it's, it's to our advantage to show that uh, everything, uh, nothing is, is new under the sun, and uh, our raison d'etre is about freedom, liberation, and education. When you mentioned earlier refusing to give up, and that's huge because... Um, As you stated, a lot of the issues that we faced in the past are now rearing themselves with a different face. So refusing to give up is a theme, is a chord that it seems like has been lost in a lot of the newer generations. They don't have the same fight. And many times because, if you know, the food that you eat or the TV that you watch or the video that you games that you might play kind of suppress those feelings and then what we find is that they're taking them out on each other. So there's a lot of violence, youth violence on one another. What could a ceremony like this offer to the youth or to someone who does hasn't is not uh, ignited? They don't have that spark that's ignited. What what would something like this bring to them? We're showing people that uh, there is. We're showing youth that. Uh, Things, uh, again, didn't just start uh, Mm -hmm. yesterday. There's a tradition. There's a pattern that's going on. And unless you recognize that, uh, uh, you will not necessarily uh, come out with a uh, silver spoon uh, because uh, you do not necessarily uh, stand by yourself. When our youth today think about... uh, the music that they have or the, or the cars they ride in or the house they live in. Well, right. the reality is people fought for that. That, it, that's, that would not have taken place right. had it not been a struggle, had it not been uh, a sacrifice made by many before them. So in order to keep them from being complacent, in order to keep them from taking things for granted, taking opportunities for granted, we want to ensure that... Uh, they will get this education, get this information, get this enlightenment, and know that it's more to music than uh, a rapper, a modern-day uh, interpretation of a dance. Dance has been taking place on. Modern dance has been going on for years, and it, and it often had a symbolic meaning. Mm-hmm. And, and to the extent that they can pick that up, to the extent that they can learn about the importance of uh, of religion, of spirituality, right. not necessarily religion, but spirituality, right. uh, that you can... Uh, you can pray, you can meditate, you can aspire, uh, and you can recognize that uh, there is a, a, a supreme being that will, will guide you. Teens tell teens. We must tell our friends about AIDS. Seventy-five percent of white students graduate in New York City. Only fifty-two point one percent of African American students graduate in New York City. Only forty-nine point four percent of Hispanic students graduate in New York City. 12% of students receiving special education services graduate in New York City. At least 40% of all students leave school without a high school diploma in New York City.
have the right to stay in school until the age 21. If you would like more information about your right to stay in school or return to school, please contact Advocates for Children's helpline at 1-866-427-6033. The show that I have is The Jose Show, where I produce it and I'm the host of it. The show is about youth nonprofit organizations that benefit young people, where I feature youth organizations that are working with the young people, that is doing tremendous work with these young people to get where they want to be in their careers. And the importance of this show is to make sure that young people get a chance to show off their talent and perform and bring out different discussions that they want to talk about. Well, if I had a chance to make a show, I would make a show like um, a sitcom, sort of. It would be about people that deal with different issues, like primarily youth that deal with issues with their parents. It would have like six different, you know, youth that have d six different parents. That would be my primary goal, to try to show people that just because you may be a different race, everybody experiences different things with their parents and everybody could, could relate to it. We have to talk about the things that are negative that are happening, but we con must continue to highlight the places of healing for ourselves. And even if I, I took it that, um, you know, like if you're going through something and you need help from your ancestors, what better place to go than to ask to go and, you know, give flowers and pay homage to the ones who really struggled, who really understood what it meant. Um, I'm moving, uh, moving along because I know you don't have a lot of time, but what do you have to say to those who say, well, that time in history is just one time for us, and we had a, a history that was, um, you know, very extensive before that, and it's, not, it's very important that we don't focus on that part of our history. That's understandable because uh, we had families, we had uh, values, traditions, we had a religion. We're very deeply based in our, our own uh upbringing and morals and values, but there was an attempt to disrupt that and uh, we cannot ignore it because to ignore it would deny, would, would again make us think that just because we're going along fine now that that cannot be taken away. Mm. Just as uh, all those liberties and all that, uh, uh, those values and the, and the way in which uh, we raised our, our families and, and children and how we've marketed things. Just because all that changed, the same types of things, that we, liberties that we have now can change overnight. Mm. There are no guarantees. You spoke about teaching of principles of self-respect and self-worth. What are some of those principles that you taught or that you touched on when you were working in the field or working on, in the field, on the field, yeah. out in the field? In the field, mm -hmm. yeah, in the field. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. If you uh, can't do it, Say you can't do it. You right. Know, honesty, probity, we called it. Uh, and it wasn't so much that uh, you had a lot that you could do and a lot that you couldn't do, but being upfront, being very candid with whoever you're dealing with. So we spent a lot of time talking about the importance of being a, quote, person of your word. You're not trying to do the impossible because it's, there are times when you can't legitimately keep your word. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that has to be explained. That has to be uh, recognized. Uh, there, there are exceptions to everything. You know, but, but what I find, not to cut you off, mm -hmm. is that sometimes when you want to please other people, you might say, well, yeah, sure, I can do that or I can do this. And, you know, you want other people to, there might be underlying reasons. You want people to like you or you want to mm -hmm. seem important. So you say you can do all you these bite things. bite off more than you can chew, knowing that uh, if you have uh, $50, you can't act like you have a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, you you got to manage what you have. Not everybody's going to be a, a millionaire. Some people a thousandaire. Some people hundredaires. Mm -hmm. You know, but whatever you have, because the point was that uh, even a millionaire can be broke. You know, we talk about some of the athletes, how they go through the money, or some of these celebrities. Uh, 
uh, riding the, the bends and things one week and the next week uh, they're strung out on something. You know, right. They've lost it all. Right. So it's not so much how much you have, but how what you do with what you have. Mm. Nothing is done. There's nobody that's an island. Everybody has to, got to work together. None of us, I don't care, when you, even when you, we talk about graduation, you didn't just graduate because of all you did, whether it's high school, junior high school, college. Your mother helped you, your sister helped us. People made sacrifices for you. Right. So you need to recognize that uh, even when you are being praised, you need to, like anytime you get an award, we need to say the first thing you do, you want to thank those who made it possible for mm. you to recognize that uh, it's not you alone. I notice now in a lot of the award shows with young people, not many people acknowledge God and it doesn't have to be a particular type of God right. but it whatever God yeah. is the God that you serve Allah mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you know uh, but they don't acknowledge anybody which is really alarming yeah and that's uh, that shows that we need work there's work that's got to be done I say I agree with you and I say get out to the ceremony tomorrow I, I tell people that get out to the ceremony and Let's begin the healing process. And the marches are very important. We need to do those too. We need to, you know, make it to the lectures. We need to work with the youth. But I really do like the idea of the healing aspect. If you have a wound and it's infected, you need to clean it out and heal it before it can heal or before it can close. So um, I know you have to run, but um, as far as uh, tomorrow's concerned, What would you like to convey to our listening audience? What information would you like to give them? We've got the the bulk of the day, uh, so uh, come on out anytime between noon and sundown. Uh, Know that uh, you you don't. There's something for everybody, young and old, black, white, brown, yellow. Mm -hmm. Uh, There, whatever you're. You're into the, the type of music, the type of uh, whatever your your faith is, uh, whatever your uh, issues are, they're going to be, uh, you'll have a time to uh, put them into perspective. And I think that everybody will get something out of it. Do you know the order of events for the day? or I evening? do know in the evening, that's when we culminate with the, uh, we actually go out on, on the water and uh, Throw the pedals out, put the pedals out just like you do, and uh, you'll see some interesting things and some, some music around that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Is it, do people cry, or what are the emotions usually from the people uh, there? They're all emotions, yeah. Elation, uh, tears, uh, uh, solitude, uh, anything, the full range, the full gamut. Can you tell us a little bit about Dr. Mary Umulu? Uh, w- did I did not. I did not know her. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. but I do know that this was her. This, she's she was a brainchild for this mm-hmm. uh, uh, professor uh, at uh, Meg Rivers. She was a brainchild of many things, including our jazzy jazz program that we have uh, each summer. She was a uh, uh, very uh, well respected, uh, worked very closely with uh, the community and with the students and uh, thought that it was very important to uh, to recognize uh, what has taken place before and to carry on uh, culturally, socially, and politically. Dr. Newsom, I just want to let you know that um, once you come on the show, now you are part of the Harlem 411 family. Thank so you. you've been inducted into our Harlem 411 family. And I would definitely love to continue to build a bond between uh, WHCR and uh, uh, City College and Mega Everett. Definitely, definitely. We we look forward to that. You know, as new information or new events progress or unfold, we would love to have you back on the show with more information and just find out what you're doing in the city and abroad. Great. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we will be right back. Stay tuned.
the next Marcus? Next Che Guevara to spark a smart brothers with heart. Not carbon copies, but brothers that embody that. Ride or die spirit like Geronimo Pratt. The Black Panther party. G's, G's like Bunchy Carter. Carter. This, this is G call. call. Where the G's at? at? Probably in jail on the track. Where, Where the G's at? at? We need to take it back to that black power, black love. Yeah, that BLA thing. Black mass, black glove. They could kill a revolutionary, but they can't kill the revolution. The struggle lives on just in a different form. A different face in a different place at a different time, but the same aim, and that's the brain. They can kill the revolutionary, but they can't kill the revolution. Lucian, Struggle lives Lucian. on, just in a different form. Pay attention, they could kill a revolutionary, but they can't kill the revolution. Hi, my name is Kwandisha, and I'm representing TW Entertainment, and you're watching the youth channel. Just because of my background doesn't mean you could stereotype me for what I look like. My parents came here. My parents came here so that I could have a better life. Not all of us are the same. Not all of us are the same. Yo soy Latino. Ako ay Filipino. Oh, ay Please don't judge us. Please don't judge us. Please don't judge us. Please don't judge us. If I had the chance to have a show on your channel, it would be a comedy show about the workplace and the challenges that people have there. And it would entail examples such as if someone has a mean boss or they can't figure out their actual job and title. The message that will go out to the audience is that people can overcome challenges no matter what it is at work, that they should know how to deal with it and be strong during the process.